It's time to reclaim your space on the Steam Deck. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready. This is my weekly news update for everything Steam Deck. The first thing I want to tell you about though is the games I've been playing. Still making my way through Chronicon, but I also decided to try out Path of Exile because I saw that it has full controller support and a native Steam Deck graphics preset right out of the gate. This game is awesome. It reminds me a lot, obviously, of Diablo 2 and I guess Chronicon. Uh, there's a lot to learn in this game. Game, though I've been digging into guides and stuff like that I don't know how deep into it I'm going to get because my main live service or like game that's going to take up all my time is Destiny 2 and I don't know how much time I have for Path of Exile but if you're into Diablo you're looking to scratch that itch before Diablo 4 comes out in June uh, this is a good game to check out I think because even if you're not going to dig into all the guides and the minutia of like the end game it's still a really solid ARPG at its core and it's just fun to play and honestly the controller mapping is really good. I know we just kind of got burned by Neil Druckmann uh, tweeting that The Last of Us Part 1 was going to work really well on Steam Deck and then obviously we saw what happened there but I saw that the CEO or someone really high up at Blizzard actually followed the On Deck Twitter account so I think that's a good sign as for whether or not Diablo 4 is going to work natively out of the box. I know that the beta was working for people but we, we've seen these games, these online live service games where you know they'll work for one minute and then the next day you'll get a random update to something like Ubisoft Connect and it totally breaks all of these live service games. So it's good to see people from Blizzard at least interacting with the On Deck Twitter account at least by following it. Now the first news story I have for you guys today is kind of interesting to me because I am a huge VR fan as well as a Steam Deck fan. I'm just going to be real though my main VR headset lately has been the PSVR 2. Just the ease of use of it, the comfortability and just the overall quality of the graphics and the gameplay and everything like that. It's hard to beat it as a VR headset headset because you can really just turn on your PS5, plug it in with one cable and be good to go. I was going to say the one game that it doesn't have, but there's still a lot of games on PC VR that are really good. It doesn't have the one that I want to talk about today is Half-Life Alex because for a while now people have been working on a mod for the game to make it run as a non VR game. And because it's a Half-Life game, it's made by Valve. People are like, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if this game could run on Steam Deck? And there have been big strides in this actual mod as of late. So the mod is called HLA No VR. Pretty good title for it. You can get it from GitHub and all you basically do is take the mod contents and put them in the install folder for Half-Life Alex, and then you just use two presets. I'm not going to walk you through a tutorial or anything, but once you do that, the game will actually run on your Steam Deck, which is pretty cool. Now, as you can imagine, this is a huge undertaking that people are doing pretty much out of their own free will, so there is a lot of work to be done on it, but just the idea of seeing a VR game downscaled or like translated to be 2D and run on the Steam Deck, which is just a handheld, it's pretty crazy and pretty awesome and honestly I hope Valve kind of takes a look at this and says hey maybe we could convert Half-Life Alex over to Steam Deck as time goes on because while yes VR did get pretty big and is pretty big right now I've seen it sort of dwindling as of late like it has a much more hardcore user base than something like the Steam Deck which we'll talk about a little bit later how many sales are expected by the end of the year but it's quite a bit so yeah I think there is utility in Valve maybe taking a look at this mod and saying hey hey, come work for us, translate the game over to 2D, let it run on the Steam Deck and have fun with it. But yeah, if you don't have a VR headset and you were hoping to play Half-Life Alex on your Steam Deck maybe in the future, it looks like that is going to become a reality, which I think is cool. Next up, let's talk about Steam Deck sales, not Steam sales, Steam Deck sales, like as in how many Steam Decks have been sold, because officially we don't know. Valve has been saying it's been selling pretty good. They're happy with the performance of it. They're happy with the sales, which is good for us because that means more support in the future. I am more than happy to hear that as a consumer, especially because, you know, over on the Sony side, the reason the Vita died is because it wasn't adopted to their standards. It looks like Valve standards are being met for the Steam Deck and that's good. So all we really know right now is that a KDE developer told us in 2022 that a million units had been sold. And then by the end of the year, some numbers came out unofficially and it looked like by the end of the year, there were 1.6 million Steam Deck sold. So in all of 2022 or most of 2022, because it came out around the end of February, there were 1.6 million Steam Deck sold, which is pretty cool. And now it looks like by the end of 2023, if a report by Omidia is to be believed, there will be over 3 million Steam Decks out in the wild. Now, obviously, when you compare that to something like the PlayStation 5 or even the Xbox Series X or the Nintendo Switch, that is not really a big number to sneeze at. But that's 3 million people out there who are now buying games on Steam. So while yes, Valve does sell this console or handheld or whatever, handheld PC, whatever 
whatever you want to call it at a loss, they are making so much of that money back pretty much the day the person gets it in their hands because theoretically they're just going on Steam and buying a ton of games, right? Like Valve takes 30% of every third party game that's sold on Steam. That adds up really quick and obviously that's a big reason as to why there's such a big company in terms of money. Not really in terms of numbers because we've heard over and over again that they don't really have a huge number of employees over at Valve. You also have to consider that there's only one real place to get the Steam Deck, which is Steam. You can only really order it from there. I know you can get used ones off of like Facebook Marketplace or OfferUp or, you know, eBay or any of those other sites. But in terms of like buying a brand new Steam Deck, the only place you can get it as of now is Valve. Even with the PS5 and Xbox Series X, which were pretty limited for the first couple of years they were out, you could get a PS5 from Sony Direct. And I know a bunch of my friends were able to get them that way through PlayStation Direct. You would wait in the queue. Your number would be pulled. You would buy the PlayStation. Everything was good. But that whole time, you could also get them in drops on Amazon. You could get them in drops on Best Buy. You could get them in drops on Target. Now you can just walk into Target, Best Buy, wherever, and chances are you'll see that God of War Ragnarok bundle for the PS5. So even though that one had limited sale availability at launch, it still, from the very beginning, had much more available places to buy that device versus the Steam Deck. Honestly, I'm not a sales figure analyst or anything like that. I don't really know how to interpret this. I'm just going to take Valve at their word that they're happy about the Steam Deck's performance. I mean, for the thing's one year birthday, they put out a really cool video where they talked about a bunch of stats and details and talked about some of the games that have really blown up on the device. I think one of Valve's latest surveys told them that 42% of the people who buy a Steam Deck end up spending all of their time gaming on it. And for me, I'm going to be real. That's not the case. It doesn't take up a hundred percent of my playtime. I have a PS5. I spend a ton of time gaming on that on the couch. I have my main gaming PC, which I'm going to be real before the Steam Deck, my main gaming PC, a lot of nights after work, I would come to my desk. I would sit down here. I would get into the battle station, right? I'd throw on my good gaming headphones. I'd boot up destiny. And then I would just stare at the screen, right? Like the start screen, because all of the stuff that I had to do in destiny at that time was it just involved a lot of farming, repeating activities, doing a lot of work, stuff that felt like busy work that I didn't really feel like doing because I just got off of work. But now with the steam deck, I just turn that thing on. I go into a bunch of indie games like dredge lately or Hades or just stuff that I haven't really been playing on my main gaming PC and that block that like tiredness that I would get from coming to my computer not really wanting to find an LFG group in Destiny and do a raid or anything like that that has just been totally eliminated by the Steam Deck which is great I'd say I spend about 50% to 60% of my time on the device which I feel like totally justifies its price tag the fact that we have MU Deck which is an easy way to set all this stuff up is also awesome because once you can remove all those barriers that make PC gaming not like the first choice for a lot of people who just want a console they can turn on and get into the game with, that's what's really going to make them want a Steam Deck in the long run. But I have noticed that lately, it seems like once a week or twice a week at least, the Steam Deck starts trending on Twitter. We've seen more games like Live a Live or Live Alive. Or I don't know how you say it. I'm not a JRPG guy. That game just came out and Square Enix made a big point about it being verified on deck. Ghostwire Tokyo just got its Spider's Web update because it came to Xbox and Game Pass and all that. And now it's on the Valve like home screen on Steam here and it says, hey, play this game on Steam Deck. So it is good to see it being marketed more and more. And of course, during sales, there is a Steam Deck section. So yeah, 3 million units by the end of the year seems like a pretty healthy number for the device. I hope it keeps growing. I'm just glad Valve is happy with these numbers. Next up for all my fellow Resident Evil fans out there, Resident Evil Village just got a great update on Steam that's going to result in better performance across the board no matter where you're playing, which means Steam Deck as well. So there was an issue when Resident Evil Village came out with the game where it had Capcom's built-in anti-tamper protection thing, like it's DRM or whatever. And it was super irritating because on some PCs, mine included, when you would shoot an enemy, when they would die, it would be like, that was the check it looked like for this anti-tamper software. And it would have a single frame stutter, which like, if you're sensitive to stutters, like I am having a single frame stutter every time an enemy dies, especially in an action heavy game, like Resident Evil Village, where you're shooting lichens all over the place and they're dying. And then you get the stutter. It's super freaking irritating. And I played the whole game like that and I was going to wait, but I'm glad I played the whole game because it actually took them a year to remove that. And it basically resulted in the game performing a lot better, eliminated a lot of that stutter, which was awesome. But it looks like they also had Denuvo, which is another super hated anti-tamper software and pretty much every game it's included in. I didn't even know they had Denuvo implemented. They must have just replaced their in-house version with it when they took that out. But they've also just removed that 
that from Resident Evil Village on PC. I booted the game up right after I finished Resident Evil 4, and the game was already running at a rock solid 60 frames per second at 1440p for me, maxed out. And it's great because you don't even have to use FSR or DLSS or anything like that, which is awesome in 2023, but it looked like it was still running great. I booted the game up on Steam Deck, and whereas before I was getting around 50, 55 FPS at some parts, it felt like the game was running overall a lot smoother. So yeah, it is nice to see Capcom going back and removing Denuvo from their games that have them. I mean, of course, they're doing it because the game's been out a while and they basically feel like they've extracted as many sales out of it as they can. It's the last Resident Evil release. Resident Evil 4 is out now. Everyone's playing that, so they probably feel safe going back and removing it. That's fine. I totally get why they need something like Denuvo because they don't want people pirating the game. I just wish it didn't have such a huge performance impact on stuff because, well, yes, everyone blames it for everything. Sometimes it isn't totally the cause, but in nearly every case where it is removed from a game, it does result in better performance. So yeah, I get the reasoning for wanting DRM in their games. I just wish there was a better version of it that didn't result in such a huge performance hit. But yeah, not only did Village get a performance boost from this update that removed Denuvo, uh, Resident Evil 4 got an update that added the mercenaries, which was awesome because it came in right when I was finishing my second playthrough. I was like, great, I can jump into the mercenaries. And it ended up being awesome because if you get S ranking with one character on all three maps, you just unlock the hand cannon, which previously was a super hard unlock to get, but that I'm like getting off subject here. One of the biggest reasons it's good that this mercenaries update came out is that across the board, whether you're on PS5 or PC, the game's frame rate has been completely evened out. Like when I was playing through the story, there were a couple parts where you would get loading stutters between level map chunks, basically. And then in certain areas, like when the helicopter comes in towards the end of the game and there's a lot of particles and a lot of bullets flying around, the frame rate would drop a little bit. Uh, this update basically happened while I was in a checkpoint in that level. So I went to bed the night before the update, halfway through that level when the helicopter was flying around and I was getting huge frame rate drops. Then this update happened while I was sleeping and then the next day when I came back to play it, the frame rate was totally evened out in that area, which is awesome. And it allegedly also helps in the area that was causing the biggest performance hit, especially on the Steam Deck, which is when the game starts heavily raining and there's a ton of storms going on, probably about halfway through the game. Allegedly, it makes it a little bit easier to run that area as well. I just haven't been able to test it out yet. So you'll have to let me know down in the comments below. Next up, we have a news story I'm super excited about. It came in right before I was about to record this video. So I figured I'd talk about it. So one of the biggest issues with the Steam Deck that we've been hoping Valve would figure out sooner rather than later is the shader cache, right? Like there have been third party apps and now I think there's one built into Steam natively that allows you to clear the cache. But basically if you have it activated, whenever you have a game installed on your Steam Deck, it's periodically going to check the Steam database and say, hey, is the cache built out? And then it's gonna say, yeah, it's gonna download all those shaders. You've seen it before probably when you go into your downloads, when you boot up your Steam Deck for the first time in a little while and you get all these downloads and you're like, they're not patches, what's it doing? It's downloading shaders for your game from Valve, which is great. The issue is when you have a lot of games installed, like I personally do, I have like a two terabyte Steam Deck and I'm constantly deleting stuff now whenever I need new games because it's full, uh, those shaders take up a lot of space on your storage, right? Like you can go into the storage section of Steam and see how much those shaders are taking up. And usually for a lot of people, it's more than the actual amount of games that they have on their actual Steam Deck, which sucks. That's why I'm super excited that I just saw this news story that the graphics driver that the Steam Deck uses in Linux, which is open source, is getting an update to the way it works that'll basically make it so that this shader cache is going to take up 60% less space on your Steam Deck. So it's going to be reduced by over 60%, which translates to a lot of storage being freed up on your device for more games that you're probably going to either start up, check if they run well, or never play. Now, unfortunately, we don't exactly know when this update is happening, but we have a pretty good idea. So the driver itself is supposedly dropping in May. We also know that SteamOS 3.5 is coming soon and that it will have a graphics driver update, which is awesome because hopefully that results in better performance across the board for the Steam Deck. I love graphics drivers updates, but we know that SteamOS 3.5 is going to include a graphics driver update. So you can kind of put the math together here and say, okay, the driver's dropping in May. The beta version of 3.5 will probably happen sometime in May. And then around June, we'll get 3.5 in the stable release, which is pretty good timing. So by June, I would guess maybe July at the latest, we will see a 60% reduction in the amount of space that shaders take up on the Steam Deck, which overall, great news coming out from Valve today. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you on this week's edition of Steam Deck News. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Maybe subscribe, set your notifications, do all if you haven't already. And as always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. 
I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.